Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and... <laughs> oh, I was going to say something hilarious, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, maybe I'll keep this in. Maybe I'll... No, I'm going to edit this out. No, I'll leave it in. Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. This intro is getting stale as hell. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> So did you just get clickbaited into watching this video? Is this clickbait? Huh? Are you going to be the guy in the comment section? Marco, this is clickbait as you type from your mother's basement in your underwear. <laughs> Listen to me. None of my videos are clickbait. Not a single one. Okay? They are factual. I have too much respect for my audience. And I value their critical thinking skills to make clickbait videos. You're not 17. Okay? You're probably 29 getting engaged, you're 31 with a kid. I don't have time for clickbait. You don't have time for clickbait. Listen to me. <laughs> so I have two charts here. Uh, one is from census.gov. The other is from the NAR, National Association of Realtors. Uh, nothing but facts and figures. Uh, we're going to analyze these facts, and then we're going to go into my thoughts at the end of this video to see if the marking, the marking, the housing market has peaked. Let's get right into it. So this is from census.gov. This is the monthly new residential sales for June of 2021. Uh, this is new construction, you guys. This is not houses that are already existing uh, or you know previously built. So let's see. For uh, June of 2021, we have 676,000 uh, new houses sold. Uh, we have 353,000 new houses for sale, seasonally adjusted. And the median sales price was $361,800. So I'm going to zoom into this chart right here so we can get a feel for what's going on with the new sales uh, for new construction. So you can see here from June of 2016 all the way until about, let's call it, you know, just at the end of 2020 here, um, that it was pretty much in line. There's definitely an uptick, but then we see an explosion happen uh, right in the summer of 2020, okay? And then now new home sales are starting to creep down just a bit. So let's dig into these numbers just a little bit more. So if we go down here, we can see sales of new single family houses in June of 2021 were adjusted at 676,000 uh, homes. This is 6.6% below the revised May rate of 724,000 and is 19.4% below June 2020. So keep this in mind. Uh, the median sales price of new houses sold in June was $361,800 and the average was $428,700. Uh, before I get into the, new, uh, the next slide or the next piece of information in this video, what are your thoughts about these prices? Do you think they're crazy? Do you think they're low? Do you think they're somewhere in the me uh, median? What are your thoughts uh, as a somewhat middle class to upper middle class viewer. Uh, none of my viewers are in the 1%. They're not Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Maybe they are. None of you guys are in the 99% either. Maybe you are, but most are somewhere in the middle. What are your thoughts about these prices? So as we get into the next piece of information here, this is from uh, the June summary from the National Association of Realtors. This is existing home sales statistics. So the first one was new construction, which we can see was on a downtrend, at least for June. Um, and then we can see here that it's been pretty much flat since 2017, all the way up until Cerveza sickness over here, March, April of 2020. And then since then, we got a lot of money printing, buddy. We got a lot of quantitative easing. Let's print these trillions, baby, over the last 18 months or so. Uh, just a quick fun fact, 30% of all U.S. dollars in existence were brought into existence over the last 18 months. The more you know. So with this being said, a lot of stimulus, a lot of low rates, a uh, lot of uh, low supply, and a lot of demand. And we can see that that's taken hold right here. But however, we did hit somewhat of a downtrend uh, going into January of 2020, or 2021, excuse me, and it's been dipping, 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 and we finally saw our first uptick since basically May of 2021. So total, uh, uh, total homes sold were 5.8 million. If we go into our next slide here, we have hit a record high of median prices of existing home sales ever. In the entire history of this country, we're at $363,300 median price of all homes sold. So what constitutes a single family home or a residential home, excuse me, are condos, single family homes, duplexes, basically anything that's four units or under. Uh, once you get into five units and higher, you are sitting in commercial real estate territory. So we can see here since 2017, 
Uh, if you look at the y-axis, the price of these uh, existing home sales uh, is just over $250,000. Fast forward four years later to next June, or excuse me, uh, four years uh, later to the next following June is $363,000. We're looking at essentially a $100,000 per home uptick on the median sales price. What are your thoughts on that? Leave a comment down below. So the next slide here is existing home sales median price percent change year over year. So we're looking at uh, month over month. So you can see the months here, but this is comparing it to its previous year month. So if I'm looking at June of 2021, this percentage is showing that houses in June of 2021 are 23.4% higher than June of 2020. Makes sense? So if we're talking about houses, house prices peaking or the housing market peaking, Price is one thing, median price is one thing. We're gonna talk about days on market and things like that later in the video. But you can see here, it's done nothing but go up uh, since December of 2020. You can see 12%, 14%, 16%, 18%. And we're sitting at our highest here at 23.6% for May, 23.4% in June. This could, however, change quickly, it just depends. So if we look at the total existing home sales percent change year over year, this is simply just the number of homes sold, okay? So we have a huge dip right here from May uh, to June. This is May 2021. We saw a 44.1% increase compared to May of 2020, which is astronomical. It's huge. Um, but then we have a significant dip going down to June of 2021, comparing it to June of 2020. However, I think we're getting so uh, <laughs> so inundated with these high numbers that we're not realizing that these numbers are huge to begin with. 22.9% is still a huge percentage increase change year over year, even when you're comparing it to June of 2020. So there's still lots of home sales going on. None of these are negative um, unless you compare June of 2019 to June of 2020, which is negative 10%, which you can see right here. So if I keep going, this is a very interesting slide and there's a lot of information here. Uh, you can see in the y-axis, this is the percentage of sales of homes uh, on the y-axis. And then the x-axis is different, which I'll explain as I go. So first time home buyers, you can see that they've dropped down. So the red is June of 2021. The pink or the light red is June of 2020. You can see here in June of 2020, there's 4% more first time home buyers uh, this June, or last June, excuse me, than there was to this June, uh, 31%. Uh, that's pretty interesting. That shows me that demand for the first time home buyers is starting to slow down. Uh, sales to investors, this was actually pretty interesting. I thought with prices being so high and so crazy, it's already hard enough to make these numbers work in a lot of markets, uh, especially if you're buying and holding. Maybe, inve maybe investors constitutes um, flippers. So maybe that's why this number is going up, not people that are just buying these houses to rent them out as a long-term buy and hold. So we see here that's actually gone up 5% year over year. It's 14% of June of 21 compared to 9% of June of 20. Cash sales. This is not surprising to me. Uh, you have markets like Austin, Texas, where you have to come with cash. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard for you to compete on a home sale. Uh, some of these houses are going for hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking, and a lot of them are closing with cash with very little contingencies. So 23% of June of 21 compared to 16% of June of 20. Distress sales, uh, only 1% and 3% respectively. This number's actually gone down. Um, I think that could be because of legislation, which we'll talk about at the end of the video. A lot of these um, moratoriums on evictions and things like that. However, I do see these numbers going up in the future for sure. Uh, then we have days on market. Days on market is a big uh, star. This is a comp or a metric that I look at all the time when I'm looking at comps. Days on market means how long has this property been sitting uh, for sale on the market? Obviously, the higher the number, the more red, uh, yellow flag or red flag that you're looking at. Why is this property sitting for so long? Uh, typically, these properties have deferred maintenance, uh, maybe deferred taxes. They have liens against them. Uh, they have unpaid you know, bills, You know, whatever you want to call it and the, the prospective buyers don't wanna buy this thing. Maybe the price is too high, maybe the demand is low. But you can see here that days on market is actually lower uh, 17 compared to 24, uh, June uh, 21 to June 2020. This means that houses are selling faster. 
So if you look at existing home sales by region, uh, this is no surprise. Uh, people are moving to the south. They're moving to the Sun Belt. They're sick of the crappy weather. They're sick of the crappy politics, especially if you're coming from New York City. Um, a lot of people are moving from New York City or New York in general uh, down to Florida, if you will. A lot of people are moving to the Carolinas. A lot of people are moving to uh, the Sun Belt states, your Arizonas, your uh, Nevadas, your Californias, your Texases, things like that. Um, sorry, not your Californias. There's an exodus going on there. But you can see here that 44% of existing home sales by region came to by the south, 20% the west, 13% northeast, 23% midwest. Um, housing supply at the national level, this is a big metric for me. Um, whenever you look at the basic laws of supply and demand, obviously if there's less supply and, there, and the demand is the same, obviously the prices have to go up. This is common sense. Uh, so if you compare June of 2020, you can see here that the green line are condos. The blue line is the national supply, okay? Um, and then it just keeps going down, 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 and then somewhat back up. This is months of supply, if you will. So it's been relatively flat, I want to say, since um, January of 2021. It's actually gone up just a little bit. Um, but it's still below, significantly below where we were from a year ago, okay? So this is a positive, in my opinion, for the market. Now, if you look at sales uh, by price range, uh, this is pretty interesting, and it makes sense based on the previous slides that we've seen. So a majority, um, a significant majority of price, um, price house prices, sorry, I can't talk, I didn't eat yet, uh, is 43% in the $250,000 to $500,000 range. Uh, this makes sense because if you look at uh, some of the higher priced amounts, they're going to obviously be less just because less of the population can afford those houses. But if you also look at this, the $100,000 to $250,000 margin or range is only 24%. This, this kind of conflates with the uh, slide that we looked at previously where first-time home buyers, maybe people in this $100,000, $250,000 range are either simply getting priced out um, or the demand is not there. So that makes sense, uh, which you can see the $250,000 to $500,000 range, you can see is much higher at 43%. This could be people in the Midwest looking for a forever home or it could be people on the more expensive coasts looking at uh, maybe their first home or starter home, if you will, or condo. So if you look at the percent change in sales from a year ago by price range, uh, this makes a lot of sense. It basically um, agrees with what we just saw. The zero to $100,000 range is negative 23% year over year. That means a quarter less people are buying houses in this price range. That could be because prices are high. It could be because first time home buyers, the demand simply isn't there. Um, you can see 100 to 250,000, it's negative 15%. And then we can see that um, all this up here is actually increasing a lot, which shows me that sales are still strong uh, in the starter home to forever home or McMansion type of home uh, price ranges, as we can see dictated by this X axis. So that was pretty much it. Uh, what this all boils down to, you guys, uh, we saw some stats that show a bearish scenario. We saw some stats that show a bullish scenario. At the end of the day, you guys know what drives this market. There's three factors. It's interest rates, supply, and demand, period. Easy money. Right now, we have a Fed funds rate of 0%. We're in ZERP, zero interest rate policy. Cheap money, helicopter money. Everyone can fit it into their budget because rates are so low. Cheap money is good. Asset prices go up when rates are low, period. Uh, the supply is still relatively low based on what we saw, meaning that uh, if the demand is the same and supply is lower, prices have to go up. That's talking about scarcity. And then finally, uh, if we look at the demand, which I think is relatively f uh, flat, maybe starting to wane down just a little bit compared to last year, um, you know, we're still relatively close to last year, meaning that these prices most likely will stay the same. Now, let's talk about the big X factor. It's economic policy, and it's going to be legislation, government policy. So we have these um, moratoriums on these evictions, which will be ending here shortly at the time of this recording. Uh, a lot of these landlords that have been getting screwed over for the past 12 to 18 months, they may sell their rental. They may say, hey, this thing's making me 200 bucks a month. It's not worth the headache. It's not worth being, you know, um, screwed around for for 12 to 18 months by government. I can't get this deadbeat tenant out of here. You know, I'm selling this thing. That may uh, provide an increase in supply. If we see an increase in supply, maybe we may see those um, affordable houses come on the market for first-time homebuyers, for example. Um, also, with uh, economic policy, 
All you need to do is follow the FOMC, Jerome Powell, the Federal Open Market Committee. If uh, rates are going up, which they're supposed to be in 2023, I promise you the prices of things will go down. That's simply how it works. Uh, it's just an inverse relationship between rates and asset prices. If rates stay the same and demand stays the same and supply relatively stays the same, we're just going to keep seeing what we're seeing, and that's going to be similar prices, similar price appreciation, and I think as long as demand is the same, it will stay the same as it is right now. So thank you so much, everybody. I hope you got value out of this video. Um, I was fumbling over my words in this video because this is the second time that I recorded this whole thing. The first time I crushed it, it was dad jokes galore. I was killing the game just to find out that I didn't freaking hit the record button, and I was so angry at myself. But anyway, uh, what I did allude to in that last video is I got a kid on the way in a couple days. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. There's a little thanks button down there, okay? I've been giving free information for like three years now since November of 17, so three and a half years now on this channel. I feel like the monkey with the symbols, okay? Welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. Here's some more free information. I haven't asked for anything in return. Uh, if you want to gift my daughter a little onesie or a little North Face jacket, okay, I'm in the Cleveland suburbs. It gets cold up here in the winter. Uh, hit that thanks button. Uh, you'll get a little badge in return, and it helps support uh, the birth of my new child. Thank you so much, everybody. As always, have a prosperous day. Oh, I hate when I don't hit the record button, man. You guys always wait for something funny at the end. I, I don't have it in me. I don't have it in me. I've been doing these ice baths. I feel like... Ugh, like, you know, a beast, but I just don't have it in me. I just double take this thing. I can't do it anymore, you guys. Hit the thanks button. Buy my daughter a onesie. Uh, I'll thank all you guys who do. Thank you so much. Peace.